Hey guys, Paul here. So today I'm going to give you some advice for improving in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I made a video like this a few weeks ago and people asked me to give some Master Duel specific advice. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is mostly for people who are maybe on the more casual end, but trying to get a bit more competitive, maybe make it to the next ladder ranking that could be gold or platinum or whatever. And uh, my accolades to, to give this advice is pretty much just that I play the game a lot. So uh, yeah, I mean, I've made it to master rank several different seasons, diamond rank pretty much any given season. And uh, yeah, there are better resources I'm sure out there. This is just hopefully advice that can give you even just the slightest bit of value, things that worked for me so I'm going to share them with you. Five tips. Let's hop in. The first one is uh, build for best of one. This is far and away the biggest thing with Master Duel, the biggest difference between it and the TCG in my opinion. So obviously the card pulls and stuff and like the format's different, but this is the one that affects just gameplay and deck building directly the most, I would say. So in the TCG, you've got a side deck. You've got games two and three to adapt and, you know, like figure out your opponent and stuff like that. In Master Duel, it's all best of ones. So whether you're playing the Duelist Cup or climbing the ladder, you are going to be playing a best of ones. And that means you need to build your deck specifically for that purpose. This means that you'll need to use hand trap cards. Almost definitely the Maxi and Ash Blossom Suite is really important. But also it's really important to have board breaker cards in your main deck. So that means using evenly mats. That means using Lightning Storm. That means using Dark Ruler No More or Kaijus. You can pick and choose which of these you want to use just based on what your deck can already handle or what you see as a consistent threat in the ranking that you're in. But I think it is absolutely necessary to have these cards. Even if it means moving your deck up from like say 40 cards to 42 or 43, it is well worth it because there are so many times and you can just lose the dice roll. And even though your deck is as cool and sort of bespoke as you want, it doesn't matter if you just don't have things that can let you play. You've got to have the Dark Lord No More to break that field. I would also say as a little small extra tip here, having spell and trap removal is kind of non-negotiable, I think, in Master Duel. The variety of decks that you will face means that there are going to be a lot of different decks that utilize trap cards or annoying continuous spell cards. And having something, even if it's just a Harpy's Feather Duster or maybe Lightning Storm can could account, like to deal with those cards is absolutely imperative. In the regular TCG, you can always just side in a billion different spell and trap removals and be fine. In Master Duel, you need to have something in the main deck, I think, generally speaking, in order to uh, just handle all of those potential weaknesses. Okay, second tip is um, don't tilt super easily. I promise it's not, like, it's tempting, right? When your opponent used max C on you and you had this big combo in mind and now you feel like, oh, I just have to stop, so that means I'm going to automatically lose next turn because that's exactly what max C does. I might as well quit and give up now. Don't do it. Resist the urge. For so many reasons, right? Uh, the amount of times I've just activated Max C when my hand is a complete brick and people have just scooped on the spot, like just completely just given up. And I'm like, oh, wow, great, free win. And that applies not just to Max C, but lots of other like hand traps. Imperm and Ash Blossom, I've used them on like one person's starter card and they'll just give up immediately. And it's like, you don't know if your opponent necessarily had a good or a bad hand or whatever. Maybe if you just pass your turn there, they still wouldn't actually like OTK you. They might set one card and pass. That's happened to me a lot of times. And I've also seen people just give up just because they messed up one step in their combo. Sometimes it's a step really late in their combo. Like they've already gotten like two interruptions or something on the board. But then like, because they put something in the wrong zone or actually forget the order or something, they'll like mess it up and then give up and then quit. And it's like, in Master Duel to me, uh, a, a win is really valuable, right? So taking an unnecessary loss is not good. That means it's another win that you're going to have to get later in order to get to back to where you were with how like the ranking and ladder system and stuff works. So if you feel like there's even a chance that you can win a game, then try to win the game. Try your best to fight back. It's really fun and gratifying to make like a big comeback, at least in my opinion. I had a game the other day where I've been using Rescue Ace and I was playing against Kashdira and they had me dead to rights with like Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon and a Rise Heart on the field and I had 1100 life points and I was still like, oh my god, I could just give up here. But I still had one Imperm in my hand and so I was able to use it and then they used Red Reboot on me and I was like, oh my god, I definitely lose now. But I didn't give up. I let the reboot resolve, I set a second imperm, because you know, reboot lets you do that, and then I used Raigeki to get rid of Arise Heart, and then I was actually able to summon my Hydrant, set a couple more traps, survive to the next turn, which was like crazy, and then on the turn after that, I was actually able to get the win. And I wouldn't have been able to do it if I had just given up, because there's so many times where people give up because it looks hopeless, but you gotta fight through those games. You learn a lot, 
and it's worth it if you can get the win. And if you lose, it's okay. You can still, you know, like whatever, right? It's the best of one. There's going to be another opponent. But I think that you should never just give your opponent freebies if you can avoid it. Okay, next thing is um, the hand trap game. Now, without getting into too many specifics, hand traps are obviously a big part of Master Duel, particularly like that whole um, rectangle, I guess you would call it, of like Maxi, Ash Blossom, Call by the Grave, and Crossout Designator. My thing is make sure that you're smart about your use of hand traps. I tend to prioritize using Ash Blossom before I use Maxi if I have both in my hand. Because if I use Ash Blossom and I use Call by the Grave against it, then I can then chain like Maxi to that and usually still be okay if they had like a monster that was going to try to summon something from deck, right? On the other hand though, if the Ash Blossom is the one that goes through and not the Max C, then like I only stop one thing and little things like that, right? And this can change, of course, depending on what your hand trap lineup is. I would say that the big takeaway tip here is look at the hand traps you have and carefully consider what hand traps you want to use in what situations. It matters a lot when you have two hand traps that you utilize them as best you can, like really push those hand traps to get the most amount of advantage possible. So um, yeah, okay, the next thing would be, what's my next tip? Use the dual log system. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Master Duel is a lot different than the TCG in that you get like this digital log of what's been played, what's been activated, what's been searched, what's been added to hand and set and all that stuff. And so there are a lot of times where you'll be facing an unfamiliar deck and you'll be like, oh, okay, they uh, searched this one trap card I've never seen. I don't know what it does. You can just open the dual log and go up and read the trap card. And I strongly encourage people to do this because, like, Master Duel, there's so much deck variety. There's so many different things. You're not, there's no way you can, like, know what everything does. And there's no need to have the hubris to assume that you necessarily can. Use the dual log to the best of your ability. And utilize all the things that Master Duel does for you otherwise, like the ability to see how much attack points like are on your field in total, like there's a button that does that. Or, you know, the green check mark that shows an effect's been activated. And let that inform your decision making. Don't just go in blind or assume, oh, well, whatever, this is all crazy. I'll just play as best I can and like figure it out. Like really utilize that stuff. Okay, and the final tip is, um, you'll excuse my neighbors upstairs. They're being very loud. The final tip is play to not lose. So what I mean by this is that there are a lot of times where your hand might not be the best, or maybe your field is not like, you know, the absolute strongest maximum thing that your combo can do, but there are little things that you can do to make it a little bit harder for your opponent to win. So what I mean by that is um, summoning strong monsters in defense position. This helps you play around Lightning Storm. This helps them not be smashed, in, like, you know, crashed into with a monster of equal attack. So a really influential card right now is, is uh, Kashtir Fenrir. A lot of people play Kashtir Fenrir, and they'll summon it in attack position. And I think this is usually a mistake because since it can be summoned in defense position, if you're going first, I think summoning in defense position is better. You still get all the benefits of its effects and your opponent won't be able to use lightning storm on it. They also won't be able to crash into it with another monster that has 2400 attack. So that alone means that even if the play gets interrupted, it'll be a little bit harder for your opponent to win. Another thing too is the imperm column stuff. So if your opponent has two or three cards set, then make sure that you activate your spells and set your traps in the columns that are not like already occupied, if possible. Again, they might not actually have Imperm, but it's important to do that because you're just making sure to kind of cover your bases and make it a little bit harder for your opponent to get any freebies off you. One other really important one uh, is probably Relinquished Anima. So obviously Relinquished Anima, it can like suck up a monster that it's pointing to. So it would be in your best interest when possible to play your strong monsters or your best monsters or your maybe unprotected monsters in the middle or furthest right and furthest left columns so that they can't be taken away by relinquished anima these are little things that like i said it's not really about you know getting like these aren't going to like help you like win automatically but it's going to make it where your opponent has a few less options that they can utilize to beat you and so that's important so yeah, uh, those are my five tips. Hopefully this was of some sort of value. I think if I had to give a bonus sixth tip, I would say to just uh, make your deck for the metagame that you've been facing within the ranking that you're in. So even if you've read online that like Cash Deer is the worst thing in the world and you should prepare a bunch for it, if you're not actually playing against it in gold rank, then play for the things that you have found yourself losing to. That might be the random Math Mech deck. That might be the Mekonko deck 
where even if these decks might seem a little like one trick or gimmicky, if those are the decks that are consistently giving you trouble, I would play things that are more suited to beat them than to things that are suited to beat the thing that like may or may not vaguely be a threat. And this obviously will change, right? Like gold rank is gonna be a little bit different than what platinum rank looks like, which will be different than diamond rank. Typically as the ranks go on, the deck kind of choices and stuff that you'll see will get like a little bit more concentrated. But um, yeah. Okay, that's uh, been a long-winded video, but hopefully this was useful master duel advice for some of you beginners. Um, I would like to maybe put some of it in action and upload some master duel videos here, but you guys let me know if you wanna see more of that. Anyways, let me know if any of this helped and you can leave your own sets of tips and stuff down in the comments. See you guys in the next one. Fast turn.